Hi everyone, my name is Anwen Crawford. Um, I'm speaking to you today from Gamerigal country. Uh, I've also just moved house, hence all the boxes behind me, but the light is good in this room, so you get what you get. Um, I'm going to be reading today from my book, No Document, which was published in 2021 by Giramondo. Um, the book is a work of non-fiction that might also be a book-length poem. Uh, it is an elegy for a very dear friend of mine whom I first met um, more than 20 years ago when we were students together at art school. Um, we were artistic collaborators and political comrades and the book is about, um, among other things, political activism, historical memory, um, abattoirs, border control, many things. Um, and I'm going to read something from kind of the middle of the book. Um, this section has some references in it to the German expressionist Franz Marc and his friend Paul Klee. Um, and this thread about Franz Marc and his uh, collaborators um, runs through the book really. Um, he was and remains most famous for his paintings of animals um, and he was a founder before the First World War of the German expressionist group, the Blue Rider. And there are some references in this section to uh, a large painting of his, which was one of the last paintings he made before he was drafted into World War I. Um, and the painting is called, in German, uh, Tischexale. And there are a number of translations of that title, but one of the translations uh, is The Fate of the Animals. Um, so that's just some kind of context for some of the references in this section, which I'm now going to read. Okay, so... This is no document. On Gadigal country, I come across a 19th century terrace on the road leading down to the tram sheds, now a food precinct, and the internal floors and walls are gone, but on an external wall at the third story height is an intact stained glass window, and in the opposite wall, in what would have been the room above the cellar, is a tiny great fireplace bordered with blue and white tiles. A young woman lived here once, I imagine, and thought of the light on the water what's close to these houses. She's drawing her hands to the fire. If you were alive, we'd make something. I picture us stacking all the bits we might need like spray cans or rollers in the back or on the roof of your blue station wagon that was always more scrapyard than car. You and I will just be drifting about and out of this will arise some ordinary adventure, like the song Being Boring by Pet Shop Boys, which is about what happens when you want to find a way past the humdrum but, by virtue of its title, is also about not trying to, and how these things are intertwined. Tish Iksale was damaged in 1917 when a Berlin warehouse belonging to Galerie de Sturm caught fire. Mark was dead by then killed by shrapnel at Verdun, so the painting was restored by his friend Paul Clay. She thought of the sun on the water the bay would have stumped when she lived here, with things that were made and unmade there, wall scour, slaughterhouse, piggery. You got loose of gravity. I read that the Thwaites glacier might collapse, the ice will crash into the sea with the thunder of horses, and what is that like? when it leaves. Being boring is about what we had done and then you're gone to not never being boring with me. The edge of the undamaged portion of Mark's canvas is raised above the damaged part, which sinks like an old scar and occupies about one third of a painting nearly two meters high and more than two and a half meters in width and which has a muddy tinge, perhaps caused by smoke or by water used to put out the fire that Clay either could not remove or chose not to. Credit Suisse is the financial partner of the Kunstmuseum Basel, where the painting hangs, and one of the world's largest investment banks. It hosts the annual McAleese Credit Suisse Defence Programmes Conference to showcase weapons research. For instance, the hypersonic missile intended to be capable of travelling at 15 times the speed of sound. 
An ordinary passenger jet can reach Cleveland, Ohio from Washington, D.C. in 30 minutes. In the same amount of time, hypothetically, a hypersonic missile launched from Washington, D.C. could land in Micronesia. He was more humane than I am, more openly affectionate, more explicit about everything, Clay wrote in his journal after Mark's death, and I could say the same about you, which makes me wonder if the living share a tendency to imbue the dead with goodness, perhaps especially when the young grieve the young, for in these cases we have scarcely had time to disappoint each other. Or if what I recognise in Clay's remembrance is the loss of proximity to graciousness. I felt a kind of craziness that nothing could be done to stop the war. At the start of meetings, we would ask for the undercover cops to identify themselves and leave, and of course they never did this, and of course they were there. The other joke that was only partly a joke was that the phone line in my house was tapped. Been sussing out good hiding places for when we are fugitives. You write to me. Some weeks after your death, when I returned to the flat where I lived opposite the last working container dock in Brooklyn, everything was just exactly as I'd left it. Chris Lowe is a genius, I think, because he spent a career in Pet Shop Boys, not doing anything. I saw them play once. While Neil sang, Chris turned his head from side to side. That was it. Really, I thought that in the interim, the furniture should have wrecked itself, or some creature risen out of the Hudson to expire upon my floor. I hung a black and white photograph I'd taken of you once in your kitchen on Gadigal Country by my door, but barely stepped outside for months. The title of Mark's 1913 painting, Tishik Sale, was Clay's Coinage, and has also been translated as Animal Destinies. Mark changed his mind about the war. We must unlearn, rethink absolutely everything in order to come to terms with the monstrous psychology of this deed and not only to hate, revile, deride and bewail it, but to understand its origins and to form counterthoughts. There are still patches of France along what was the Western Front, where the Battle of Verdun was fought for 24 hours short of 10 months, where nearly nothing lives. The unexploded ordnance and chlorate from the mustard gas contaminates the earth. I keep returning to the view of the Hudson as it opens to the ocean and me sat hours in tracing the paths through the window of barges, freight ships, liners, and the ferry yellow as a taxi. Feral cats fleet between container stacks. I watch them the gantry cranes, their pterodactyl bearing, the weight of you somewhere behind me now, time we fell through left hanging. Neil, our manager Tom was always, and probably still is for all I know, obsessed with thinking that Chris and I were lovers and quite simply couldn't believe that we weren't. He said to me, everybody knows. Chris, amused, <laughs> that's classic Tom. Neil, and I'd say, Everyone may know Tom, but in actual fact, it's not true. And he'd say, everyone will know why he's in the group. This is going to do you no good at all. And he suggested it would be better if I went it alone. I said that I couldn't go it alone. There are two of us. 